Guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm Charles, MX Revival, MXRevival.com. I've got something special for the 300 crew today, the SSR Motorsports crew. We're going to be testing aftermarket exhaust on the SR300 back here, and I can't wait to see how this thing runs. Special thanks to JR at SSR Motorsports. He is their lead engineer down there in Southern California. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to test out this killer looking pro circuit pipe. JR, Thank you, dude. Guys, yes, the SR300 is a legit enough scooter to actually have its own pro circuit exhaust. The pipe is made just for this bike. It's not something you scab on from a Honda or try to make fit. This pipe is actually made for the SR300 by pro circuit. The stock exhaust sounds great and it looks good, but it doesn't come with a spark arrestor. And for a trail bike, it really should come with a sparky from the factory. That's another reason why we're testing the pro circuit unit today. It actually has a removable spark arrestor. You can actually take your SR300 into trail parks when you finally get a spark arrestor on it. So we're going to load up the 300. We're going to head out to a little trail park in San Jose, California called Metcalf Motorcycle Park. It's a really small trail park. It's perfect if you want to get in, get out, get some quick exercise, maybe a place you want to go after work, take your kids there, teach them how to ride. They've got a great mix of trails. They even have a motocross track. And we're fortunate to have it about 20 minutes away from where I'm sitting right now. A lot of you guys already know that my SR300 is the 2020 model. And if you are a California native and you're thinking to yourself, how the hell is he getting a 2020 into a California park at this time of the year? Let me explain. There was actually a huge mistake when they were making the 2020 model specifically. The people who stamped the VIN number in the frame screwed up one of the digits and it actually gave the bike a green stick in California. So that's pretty awesome. I can ride this thing all year round while that rule is still in effect in California. For those of you who don't know what the green sticker law is, it's a green sticker, red sticker law. It's just some nonsensical communistic thing that they made up in this state. I'm not really sure why, but basically any dirt bike 2002 and older gets a green sticker. If your bike gets a green sticker, you can ride at county parks all year long in California. If it doesn't have a green sticker, it gets a red sticker, meaning basically that anything 2003 and newer gets a red sticker, save for a few bikes that have smog pumps, this and that. But generally speaking, the red sticker law prohibits you from riding half the year. It's a riding restriction from, well, basically through the summer, which isn't a huge deal overall, but it's definitely nice to get this thing out on the trails when no one else is around. So even though the law is pretty stupid, it has its benefits. Case in point, if you're a California resident and you have a 2020 and you got a green sticker, good for you. If you got a 21, well, sorry you got a red sticker, but that law is going away soon. I actually want you guys to check out this video right here. My friend Gene does a killer job of breaking down the whole red sticker, green sticker thing to a T. The new law is coming into effect uh, in the next coming year. So check it out. Give her a like, give her a sub. She's doing a killer job. So in today's pipe shootout, stock SR300 pipe versus Pro Circuit T6, I'm actually going to go down the rabbit hole a little bit. When we get back from the trail park, I'm going to pop the pipe back off. We're going to go ahead and break out the scale. I'm actually going to weigh both of these. I'm going to show you which one's heavier. And then we'll get into a few more tips and tricks for your stock exhaust if you aren't ready to spring the cash on the aftermarket Pro Circuit unit just yet. For everybody else, people that want the Pro Circuit pipe, uh, I really need your help. I'm going to ask a favor of you towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. It has to do specifically with aftermarket parts for the SR300. If you guys are able to lend me a hand, I would super freaking appreciate it. All right, enough bullshit. Let's get out to Metcalf. Let's strap up, go for a ride, see what this thing can do. We're going to figure out the pros and cons of this exhaust. And right off the bat, I can already tell you if I didn't have this pipe with a spark arrestor in it, I wouldn't be able to get in the park. So that's pro number one. Let's go see what else this thing has to offer. All right, guys, we're out here at Metcalf Motorcycle Park. We are going to test the pro circuit pipe. I have already installed the pipe and we are going to go ahead and hit some trails. We're also going to check out the new motocross track. It's actually not new anymore. It's been here for probably a couple of years, but I haven't had a chance to ride it yet. So we'll see how the SSR does out there. You guys already saw the Glen Helen video, uh, most likely. If not, it's right up here. Uh, check it out when you have some free time. But for today, let's go see how that pipe runs on the SSR 300 2020 model uh, with the Electron. All right, guys, I'm out here at Metcalf Motorcycle Park in San Jose, California. This is their uh, newly redone, well it's been a while now, but newly redone to me, motocross track. I'm actually impressed. I, I never thought this place would have a track like this for a county park, but uh, I am testing the Pro Circuit exhaust on the SR300. And I don't have a clue what any of these jumps look like yet, so... So far, so good. The pipe makes really good torque. 
It's uh, it was a little plugged up at first with a spark arrestor in it versus the stock pipe. But uh, it goes good. Don't know what that looks like yet. Yeah, so the, the pipe runs good. We have the Electron carb on the bike. I'm stoked that Pro Circuit makes a pipe for this bike. You can actually only get it uh, from SSR as far as I know. I'll talk to you guys about that at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's very dry. Uh, still fun, checking the place out. Uh, I like the pipe so far. That one I had down, I knew that was a shorty. So anyways, uh, yeah, so far so good. Another thing I'm realizing about this bike right now with the stock throttle is that the throw or the amount you have to turn the throttle back is really long, like really, really long. So it kind of, it could stand to have a shorter throw. So I'm going to change that out, figure out what I need to do there. But uh, track is cool. So far the pipe is good. This bike is funny, it's like a hybrid. It's like it wants to go off-road and it's nice and plush, but it's also a little firm on the trails. Then you get it out here and it actually has pretty good bottoming resistance as the bike goes through the stroke. So it's like it wants to do a little bit of both. I think this bike is like the perfect, you know, entry-level moto and off-road bike. You could do a little bit of both. It looks like a cool moto bike. It's still plush enough off-road. Um, yeah, let's check this track out. Looks like a scrub wall. So the motocross track is cool, but that's not why we're here. We are here to test pipes. So I'm going to go ahead and head out onto some trails. And I want to show you guys uh, the chuggability of this thing. Like when I'm in a uh, the bottom of a gear, a really light throttle, it wants to plug up hills really nice. So let's go check that out. All right, all right. Let's do it. Sounds pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Not quite as free flowing as the stock pipe. And you know what? Later on, when we get these two on the scale together, the stock pipe versus the Pro Circuit, I can already tell the Pro Circuit's gonna be quite a bit heavier. Uh, probably because the canister on the stalker is all aluminum. The Pro Circuit is stainless. Uh, so at least if it's going to be heavier, you're going to get a lot more durability out of it. But look at how this thing chugs. I got the throttle barely cracked open. It just chugs uphill. So that little bit of back pressure created by the spark arrestor, and I'm not an engineer, so I don't know if those are the proper technical terms, but that little bit of uh, plugging up that the spark arrestor does seems to give this thing a little more grunt. It's a little softer to respond in terms of uh, revving, but when you're plugging up a hill, the bike doesn't want to dog out as much if you're in too tall of a gear. So that's pretty cool. One thing I noticed pretty much right away. So we'll go down some trails. We'll find some cool stuff in the trees. Uh, overall, so far at least, it's a welcome addition. And uh, you know, for being a trail bike that comes stock without a spark arrestor, uh, the bike pretty much just needs the thing anyways. So let's go ride some trails. Dirt bikes, dirt bikes, dirt bikes. What's back here? Anything good? Oh yeah, let's check this out. I haven't been down here in years. A little goat trail action. Pretty cool. This bike loves this stuff. It's nice and plush. A couple little holes there. Actually, I think I crashed on this thing back in the day. Not the SSR, but on this trail. Slid off the side of the hill on my KTM. It was super neat. Yeah, no problems with the pipe. Uh, here's some holes. Oh yeah. 
Nice and chuggy. We just went over some rocks and roots and holes. Drop. There we go. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. What's that? Let's check this out. I'm in second gear. Just chugging. Barely any throttle. We're just chugging away. Yeah, runs good. The power of Pro Circuit and Electron. Now, guys, remember, if you've seen some of the previous videos, this is a 2020, comes with a horrible carburetor from the factory. The 2021 model comes with a better FCR carburetor. And so for that reason right now, the Electron mod in this bike on the 2020 is not compatible with the 2021. And that's mainly because the air boot and the intake boot on the engine are different diameters. So uh, we're still working on that. So bear with me. Just wanted to let you guys know I haven't forgotten about you. And uh, let's check this trail out. Dry, loose. Chatters. Super fun though. Super fun. This bike is great. Like, man, it's just, it does a little bit of everything. This place and this bike were made for each other. Just kind of, you can get a little more aggressive on stuff like this. A lot of green trails for your kids, your beginners, your wives, your intermediates even. And this is fun. This is a different different dynamic out here in the trees. Bike's running great. You guys can hear it. It's not bobbling or flubbering or having any like issues of any kind. Chug up this hill. Second gear, low throttle, no problem. What a great way to spend the morning. No complaints. Oh, there's a nice looking tree in the way. That was fun. It's a good little trail. Old China's getting it done. China. Man, this slow speed stuff, the bike just gobbles it up. It loves this, this kind of like not too fast, but pretty bumpy stuff. It just eats it up nice and flush, really tolerable, not a chatterbox. You get going too much faster and it does get a little out of shape, but uh, I'm 205 pounds. I'm sure the bike isn't sprung necessarily for my big fat ass. So, so far so good. We got a little single track. Let's go find some more good stuff. <laughs> Mike has really good front brakes. What do we got here? Haven't been here in years either. Super fun. Dry but super fun. Oh, some rocks. SSR don't care, man. It's running great. Really, really good. Not getting too hot. Really, really great. It gets a little faded when you abuse it too much, but you know, not bad. I mean, the bike is heavy. It's 260 something pounds, I think, or 250 something pounds plus my weight. It gets along pretty good. Get a little bit of a check to fade. A little bit of clutch fade. Fade is when the clutch starts to get hot and you end up with a little bit more free play in your lever. Not too big a deal. It's not slipping yet. Fun. So we got a nice little trail test. We got a nice little track test. 
pipe looks good, sounds good. It might be a little more portly than the stalker, but on the account that you need a spark arrestor and you don't have one in your stock pipe, this is a great option. So I need to talk to you guys though. Uh, you know, when we wrap this video up in the shop, I have a request and uh, would really appreciate your help with something. Um, I am unable to get these pipes and there's kind of no worse feeling than filming this content and writing about the bike and uh, you know enjoying the bike and then trying to help you guys out uh, with things like the pipe when I don't have access to it. I think part of the reason is because I'm not an SSR dealer and in order to become an SSR dealer uh, you need to buy in on the whole line like I would need to sell bikes and while that might not actually be a bad idea down the road um, that's not my calling right now I got I got other things going on so um, if you guys can blast SSR on their social media write them a letter give them a phone call like some of you have done and uh, see if we can get MXR to uh, get some access to this stuff you know it MX Revival is a legit company I could easily have these in the SSR mods page for you guys on the website and I think it would be a, a really welcome you know part that you guys would really enjoy so if you guys have time to help me out with that I'd be stoked if you don't that's okay too continue enjoying the content I'm happy to have you um, yeah hit them up let them know tell them MXR wants to help you guys out it's real hard to do that when uh, you don't have access to the parts line uh, you can't even call pro circuit and get this pipe so it is uh, absolutely proprietary to SSR Motorsports so appreciate your help thanks for listening to me rant and uh We'll finish up this ride with another little uh, goat trail here. See we, what kind of mess we can get ourselves into. Man, just purring like a kitten. Purring like a kitten. Electron's doing its thing. Got the cooling fan going. Bike just works good, man. This is a great, great value buy. I mean, we're making mods for it. We got the all new graphics kit for it on the website. You can do 2016 Honda, except the SSR has its own shroud. So we went ahead and hand templated this shroud so we actually have a decal for it now i'll be showing you guys that in another video with some uh, body modifications too so excited about that she just purrs man she's purring like a kitten can't argue with that boys and girls yeah buddy no boots no boots for the win. Yeah, I can picture that ankle hanging off his leg later. What do we have here? Treacherous trails. Not too treacherous. Because I'm too damn slow. Some of this stuff is decently steep, you know, it's not the Erdsberg Rodeo or anything, but, you know, it's not exactly beginner terrain either, so the bike just goes right up this stuff, it's no big deal, like, we're riding in, like, powder. A little clutch action there, no problem. The bike loves this stuff, this is where it's meant to be. Not too fast, not too slow, soaks it right up. Super fun. What a day, what a day. Oh, most difficult, experts only. Far from an expert, so. be an expert at following directions I guess more than anything else you are one pathetic loser kind of missed the trailer didn't I all right guys let's head back to the shop talk some SSR hope you enjoyed the video so far thanks for watching I'll see you in the shop
Guys, I hope you enjoyed the riding footage. I had a super good time riding. It was exactly what I needed. I sort of tweaked my back about a week ago, so it was a great test to get out to Metcalf, kind of take it easy, hit some light trails, break in the pipe on the SR300, and just generally enjoy the bike itself. First thing we should talk about is installing the pipe. It is extremely simple. All you're gonna need is a six millimeter Allen, a five millimeter Allen, a 12 millimeter box end wrench, and a 10 millimeter socket. Pop off your seat, pop off your side panel, pop off your old pipe, go ahead and throw your new Pro Circuit T6 on, throw that plastic side cover back on, reinstall your seat, go ride. It's very, very easy. Now one thing I noticed was that the pipe did not include any anti-seize. A lot of aftermarket pipes will come with this anti-seize compound that you sort of smear onto the joint between the mid pipe and the tailpipe, and that just keeps the pipes from getting stuck together down the road. But taking the pipe back off wasn't really a big deal after a full day of riding. It's more after several years of leaving a pipe on. You gotta remove it one day to repack it, and the things just fuse to the mid pipe. There's also the chance that it was in the box, and when I got rid of the box, I just didn't notice it. So most pro circuit pipes do come with that anti-seize compound. So how did it ride? Well, when I first installed the pipe, and I first fired the bike up, it's a lot quieter, go figure. It has a spark ruster lodged right into the back of it that the stock pipe does not. For those of you that want an even quieter bike and the stock pipe is kind of loud, though it does sound good, then a spark ruster, no matter how you get one, is probably a really good option. It's also worth noting that this spark ruster in the Pro Circuit pipe is fully removable. You just need a small Allen key to undo a screw, screen comes out, and then you're back to a fully open pipe. At first takeoff and the first few minutes of riding, the bike's bottom end power was sort of toned down and it felt almost a little bit more muffled, no pun intended. And that's really typical of a bike with a spark ruster installed. This was to the bike's benefit when lugging and chugging up hills. It actually created more of a luggable sensation. And as you saw in the video, the bike just trackers up hills even better than it did before in really low throttle positions. So what you seem to lose in the way of a fast revving characteristic, you pick all of that back up on the bottom end of the bike. So that was a totally welcome change and also better suited to trails anyways. So all said and done, do I recommend this Pro Circuit exhaust? Absolutely, it looks a lot better. It makes the bike feel more like a real bike. Obviously it's a real bike, but I come from Japanese and Austrian dirt bikes, motocross, you know, more recently than anything else. And so getting that pipe on this bike almost legitimizes it for me. It's got this killer pro circuit pipe. It's all TIG welded. It has a removable spark rester that my Suzuki RMZ450 also has. It just feels good. And then for obvious reasons, you need a spark rester most of the places you're gonna ride this thing. So yes, you definitely need that. Do you need to go buy the pro circuit exhaust to get a spark rester? No, you actually don't. In fact, there's a company that makes aftermarket slip in screens for stock pipes. One of those in particular I found on the dark web was a company called Fish. It's just a little insert that slides in, you bolt it on and you're done. And it turns your stock pipe into a pipe with a spark rester. So something like that would be a great option. So to go a little further on this stock pipe to me, it actually looks like an FMF canister clone and sort of has like an Acropovic brand end cap here. And due to the way these little guards and rivets are here in the front, I'm almost certain you can go to the FMF website and buy one of their decals that would fit one of the FMF power core pipes and actually slap this on here and make it look like an FMF pipe. So I haven't actually done it yet, but I'm almost positive it would work. And those are probably 20 bucks, 15 bucks. I'm not really sure, but you could probably get away with doing that slipping a aftermarket sparky insert into this thing and then you'd have a pretty legit looking pipe all things considered as for other exhaust options guys there are actually quite a few of them they don't fit perfectly but they can be made to work being that our sr300s are actually a clone of the 2016 crf 250r you can actually get dual pipes onto this bike if you peel off both of your rear number plates you'll notice there are bolt holes where the exhaust pipe hangers go. And you legit could bolt the dual pipes right onto the SR300 if you really wanted to. The only problem with the dual pipe option is the Y pipe, and that's the portion that comes off the back of the two pipes, collects in a Y, enters the mid pipe, and connects to the header. The problem there is that the pipe diameter where the mid pipe meets the Y pipe aren't exactly the same. I actually bought a stock OEM Y pipe off a of CRF 250R 2016 on eBay just to see if I could tuck it into this bike and get to the lineup where the canisters were and it actually works but like i said uh the od on the pipes where they meet y pipe to mid pipe 
they're a little bit off. So it would just be a matter of figuring out how to make those mate at the Y pipe and the mid pipe. To me, dual pipes aren't that big of a deal, but I was pretty sure you could do it and pretty much confirmed it, minus the junction I just talked about. One more exhaust pipe tip. So back in the day when the CRF 250 and 450R looked like our SR 300s that we have today, there was an FMF pipe option that was an FMF pipe single that deleted the stock duals and it came with a left side number plate that was skinnied up like a regular bike or a single exhaust pipe bike. But I did find on UFO Plastics website, if you go there, you can get it in, I believe, red, black, or white. You can still get those plates. And what that does takes your very bulbous rear number plates that the SR300 comes with. And because we don't have dual stock pipes, you sort of have this big open hole on the left and the pipe fits the number plate really well on the right. You can buy this set of rear number plates that fits the pipe on the right only and then a skinnied up version on the left side. I think the kits were called a dual pipe delete and that pipe came with that number plate from FMF back in the day. So if you don't like the look of your single exhaust on your SR300 where one plate is wide open on the left, and there's this big gap where it should have a dual exhaust canister, you can go ahead and fix that. Man, there are so many ways you can dick around and tweak with these 300s. It's another reason I really like the bike. Honestly, I've said it before, it's the bike that most people need, to be perfectly honest. All right, guys, so this is the part of the video where we go down the rabbit hole a little bit further. We're gonna go ahead and weigh the Pro Circuit pipe versus the stock pipe. We're gonna see who's heavier, who's lighter. Why? Why not? Then we're gonna go ahead and do a sound comparison. We're gonna go ahead and pit the stock pipe without a spark ruster up against the pro circuit pipe with the spark ruster. That way you guys can get a little beat on how do they sound. I know sometimes it won't do it justice coming through your computer, but we're gonna go ahead and have a little fun and do a sound test for you. All right guys, I got the shipping scale out. This thing is super accurate. I ship a lot of packages and it's always right on when I take the same box in to say the UPS store and weigh it, it's always pretty much spot on. So we're gonna go ahead and start by weighing the stock pipe. Now, this thing's pretty light. I mean, all things considered. So let's see what she weighs. Find a good balance point here. What do we have? All right, four pounds, 14 ounces. So 16 ounces is a pound. It's almost five pounds, four pounds, 14 ounces. All right, now it's time to weigh the pro circuit exhaust pipe. I think it's gonna be heavier. Let's see how this shakes out. Five pounds, 15.6 ounces. Wow, so it's over a pound heavier. You know, if we were doing some hardcore racing, I would say, man, that's a bummer. We don't want extra weight on our bike. The SSR is actually kind of a heavy bike already, being that it's a trail bike, has cooling fans, electric starter, battery, you know, things that kind of add up. But I don't think the extra pound is the end of the world. One of the reasons is because, well, you don't have very many other options. And more importantly, I think this is constructed better. This is a heavier duty unit. It obviously also has the spark ruster inside of it too. That's going to add a little bit of weight. In the event of a crash, I think the pro circuit pipe is going to take damage quite a bit better. It just feels heavier duty, better construction, not as light as this guy here. This guy feels more like an aluminum can, like you could stomp it out and flatten it. Although it is a good looking unit and it does sound good, you know, you still don't have the spark arrestor so if you could pull one of the other options we talked about where you get a slip in sparky into that guy maybe an fmf sticker you'd be on your way you'd have something that looks a lot more like this works a lot more like this and uh, you'd save a couple hundred bucks most likely so there you have it you got pros and cons the stock pipes lighter it's not as robust the pro circuit pipes heavier has a spark arrestor built a little bit more sturdily i didn't expect the pro circuit to be over a pound heavier that's actually quite a bit but there you have it those are the results at any rate now it's time to do a sound test. We're going to go ahead and bolt the stock unit back up to the bike. Listen to it. Go ahead and remove it and bolt the pro circuit unit up to the bike. Listen to it. You guys can pick which one you like better. All right. So we got the PC pulled out. We're going to put the stock pipe back on. There we go. We're going to give her a chance to warm up. This is a cold start. Honestly, not a terrible sounding pipe, all things considered. It looks good and it sounds pretty good. So now we need to go ahead and pop that off, test the pro circuit. 
Overall, the fit and finish on the Pro Circuit pipe is really good. Fits perfectly, like very snug. No slop in the joints where the pipe meets the mid pipe. Holes line up really, really well. That's nice. Like I said earlier, this thing is made specifically for this bike and you can really tell when you install it. So for me, I think the Pro Circuit sounds better. What do you guys think? I think it has a way better sound, a way better look. It fits perfectly. Like I said earlier, I feel like it just legitimizes the bike. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I have one favor to ask of you. This is going to be specific to those of you looking for things like the Pro Circuit pipe. If you could, I would love your help contacting SSR via Instagram, email, telephone, telegraph, carrier pigeon. I don't care how you get a hold of them but I need you to help me get a hold of them. Obviously, I've got my foot in the door with these guys after making these videos, and it's been great getting to know some of the guys there at SSR, but I am completely locked out from getting these parts to you guys, and it is not easy for me to make a video saying, hey, check out this Pro Circuit pipe. It's really awesome. Then having you guys ask me, where do I get the pipe? And I go, uh, I don't know. Maybe you could ask a dealer. I'm not sure. Uh, that's really frustrating. I've heard from a lot of you guys that your local dealers don't know much about these bikes. Some of them are probably amazing. Some of them are probably terrible. But the reason I'm asking for your help is if I could get access to these parts and MX Revival is a legitimate company, so it would be no problem, then it would be better able to serve you guys. Most of us have really pointed needs, like the 2020 guys want the new 2021 carb intake and air boot, or some of you just want the pipe and you can ask your dealer about it. Seems like a lot of you guys are getting hung out to dry. Your dealer doesn't know. They usually just sell units they can't get the parts. The thing is, we're the boots on the ground. You and I, we're the guys putting the mods on the bikes that either don't belong on them or that are made, but you don't have access to without going through your dealer. So I'm trying to be that guy. I'm trying to get things done for this bike. I'm trying to make mods for this bike like I would for any other Japanese or Austrian 450, 250 race bike. It's been a lot of fun. It's been great meeting you guys. It's been fun helping and being involved in your life in a positive way, especially if it's your first brand new dirt bike. I think that's amazing. So if you have time, blast SSR for me, hit them up. Let them know you guys want me to have access to this stuff. That way I can get you those little things you need. I'll have actually tested them. You and I may have actually had interactions via email or telephone about a mod you did. And what we're doing is helping tweak and tune and get these just right so that when you guys need them, I have them or somebody in a Facebook forum that's familiar with these bikes has them or can lead you to someone who can help you like me. And that would just be really great. It's like the missing link. So if you have time to do that, I would appreciate it. I know it's a big ask, but I think it would help everybody in the SSR community. And this doesn't just start and stop at SSR. This goes through all bikes that have Zongshan engines. This engine is used in a lot of bikes, SSR, a couple other brands. So I think the help would go a lot further than you realize. That being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want more SR300 videos, please smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, share the video, tell a friend. Thank you very much. I will see you soon. Until then, shred safe, kick some ass this week, and I'll see you then. She doesn't know she's Chinese. She doesn't know she's Chinese, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, so uh, I'm filming right now if you guys want to give me some opinions on old China. Very happy. No, I, I dug it. I dug it. Yeah? I was like, you know, like the, the way that the, the smaller displacement revs versus the, you know, the bigger. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, your 450. Uh, that's kind of a cool rever, you know. Yeah. Starts slow and kind of just it picks just up. It builds. And, you know, it's, to me, I, I, I kind of define that as electric, you know, the way it kind of just. Yeah. Goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just kept on the kind of gear, but then you grab a gear, it goes. Yeah. Know, what do you think, Art? I think it's a beautiful bike. Yeah? Yep. Not bad. Love the country of origin. Yeah. <laughs> Are still trying to lock down a, a little Chinese girl that's half this weight though. That's right. I want to ride around on the back. Yeah. <laughs> the moto, take yeah. her from the shrubs somewhere. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if you're talking about the bike or a little spinner, but hey. Hey, I'll leave it up to interpretation. Yeah.